Sigma 2470 f2.8 is a great deal compared to the Sony 2470 G Master. But how does it compare to my trusted 24105 f4 at about the same price range? Hi, this is David of Tech for Baba, a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. In today's video, let's talk about the Sigma 2470mm and the first Sony E-mount lens I got when I switched over to Sony 4-frame, the Sony 24105mm f4. There are already many great reviews out there comparing the Sigma 2470 f2.8 with the Sony 2470 G Master lens. I certainly agree at half the cost and almost the same performance, the Sigma 2470 is a great bargain compared to the Sony G Master. But how does it compare against the Sony 24105 f4 G lens, which is much closer in cost? In fact, there's a sale going on right now with the Sony 24105 with a $300 discount. These two lenses cost exactly the same right now. Since both lenses produce sharp picture, focus silently and quickly, I'll talk mostly about their differences in this video. Let's start with their size and weight, build quality, and pros and cons of each lens with a summary at the end. Here are the two lenses side by side. They actually look similar from afar. The Sony is a little bit shorter at 4.46 inches long versus 4.84 inches of the Sigma. Sony's diameter is also a bit smaller at 3.28 inches versus 3.46 inches. The filter size are also different. Sony uses a 77 millimeter filter while the Sigma uses a larger 82 millimeter, which is more expensive. While the difference in their sizes is not big, there is quite a difference in weight. Sony 24105 weighs 23.4 ounces, and the Sigma is much heavier at 29 ounces. That's a 25% difference, and I could feel the weight difference when I pick them up. It'll be even more noticeable after carrying or using it for an hour or two. Since the size difference isn't big, the weight difference is mostly due to build quality. Sony 24105 is very well built already. This lens has gone all over the place with me the last three years, and it had held up very well. The Sigma is even better built. It just seemed to have harder plastics and more metal parts. Both lenses have switches and buttons. On the Sony, there are two switches, an auto or manual focus switch, which is very useful, and a switch to turn the lens stabilization on or off. There's also a button that could be customized. Sigma also has a customizable button and two switches. One similar switch for auto or manual focus. The other switch is a zoom lock to lock the zoom in place at 24 millimeters. One thing to know is the lens hood on the Sigma is fancier with the lock button. It has this rubbery surface in between which feels nice but tend to attract more dirt. Aside from the weight and the build quality, the biggest difference between the two lenses are the range and the aperture. The Sony goes from 24mm wide to 105 The Sigma also starts at 24mm, but only goes to 70mm. Here's a photo at 70mm, and here's one at 105mm, taken from the same location. 105mm is quite a bit longer than the 70mm. The Sony 24105 can get a closer shot of your subject for sure. Now, if you have a high megapixel camera like the Sony a7R 3 or even better, the Sony a7R 4 you have a lot of pixels to sacrifice by using the Super 35 mode or cropping in during post to zoom in more. Of course, using these same methods with the Sony 24105 will get you even more reach than 105 millimeters. So the Sony 24105 still wins here. The other big difference is the aperture. Sony 24105 has a constant aperture of f4, and Sigma is constant at f2.8. With camera sensors getting better and better low light, high ISO performance, f4 goes a long way nowadays. I usually pair my Sony 24105 with the f1.8 prime lens for low light anyway. However, f2.8 is always more flexible than f4. Another advantage of the brighter f2.8 Sigma is the bokeh is much better than the Sony. Here's a picture at f4 with the Sony 24105 at 70mm compared to the Sigma at 70mm f2.8. The bokeh is much better on the Sigma as expected. The leave in focus just pops much more since the separation between it and the blurry background is more pronounced. 
The blurriness is also smoother and more pleasing. Now I could try to get more bokeh with the Sony by taking a big step back and zoom to 105mm at f4. You can see from this picture that the background is more blurry than the 70mm but still not as nice as the Sigma at 70mm f2.8. Hence Sigma wins big here. This is where many of us may part ways since we all have different styles and therefore different needs with our lenses. In a perfect world, perhaps we'd have the Sony 24105 for landscape and travel and the Sigma 2470 for portraits. Let me know in the comment section below which one you prefer. Lighter and longer zoom or better bokeh? Of course, it also depends on what other lenses we already have. I've compared my trusted Sony 24105 with the Tamron 2875 and the new Tamron 28200. I'll link those videos here and below in the descriptions if you're interested in my thought process there. With the Tamron 2875, I decided to keep the Sony 24105 and return the Tamron 2875. It was a much harder call with the new Tamron 28200. Even though I find myself reaching for the Sony 24105 less and less often, I still kept it around. I think I may have to finally let my old friend Sony 24105mm go now that I have the Sigma 2470. On the other hand, now that I'm trying to shoot more videos, perhaps the Sony 24105 can stay with me as a good video lens with its optical lens stabilization. What do you think? Am I trying too hard to keep my Sony 24105? Please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, Please also help me out by smashing the like button and sharing this video with others. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cherish each moment.